Hey guys! For today's video, I'm going to be showing you some of the process behind how I repaired and replanted this vintage terrarium table. So a little backstory on this table. This particular table dates back to about the mid to late 70s. It's a pretty straightforward design. It's made of three rectangular panels of clear glass in the front and three mirrors in the back. The base and top are both made with round glass pieces. Growing up, both of my grandmas had one of these. My mom had one. Many of my aunts and uncles had one. The neighbors had one. Basically, at one point or another, everyone in my mom's circle had one of these. When I asked her about it, she said that she first saw it at her neighbor's house and her neighbor told her that she bought it at a local shop. Apparently the owner of the shop made these tables himself. My mom visited the same shop and bought one. And she says after that it became something of a mini craze. Everyone who came over and saw it wanted one. I've been kind of casually scouring the internet trying to determine how widespread or popular this particular table design was, and I really didn't find a whole lot. I've seen some reptile habitats that are sort of similar, but not a lot of actual tables like this one. Either they are all broken by now, nobody cares enough to post about them, or it was more of a localized trend. My mom and my grandparents always kept silk plants in their tables, but a few years ago I decided that I was going to try to grow real plants. It actually worked much better than I thought it would, and I have had pretty good success. As a starting point, I found that your typical easy-going house plants like pothos or dracaena also do really well in this type of setup. The real problem with tables like these is that they tend to get broken, a lot, especially with kids or pets. My mom's table was broken and repaired many times throughout the years, and my grandma's table was broken and repaired a couple times as well. And recently this table broke too. I had to take the plants out for about a week or so while it was being repaired. And the shock of being removed from a really moist environment to a relatively dry one was really hard on my plants. How this table actually broke remains shrouded in mystery. To begin with, I removed all of the old plants and soil from the table. I then carefully removed the old caulk with a utility knife and a glass scraper, and then I cleaned up the glass. I took some quick measurements and then it's off to the glass shop to order a new glass panel. I'm not sure if all glass shops are this efficient, but my local shop had the replacement piece ready to pick up that very same day. I decided to just go ahead and pick up some replacement plants at Lowe's because mine looked pretty sickly. The plants I had in the table are all pretty easy going, and I think eventually they will recover, but in the meantime I want the table to look lush and full. I also picked up some clear waterproof silicone caulk to repair the table. If you want one of these kind of tables yourself, I think it's probably fairly easy to make if you know how to use a caulking gun. If you take the measurements to your local glass shop, they should be able to cut all the pieces for you, and then it's just a simple matter of assembling the pieces with caulk. 
This particular table is comprised of three identical rectangles of glass and three mirrors in the back that are also the same size. And together they form a hexagon. If you're looking for precise measurements, the two round pieces on my table measure 23 inches in diameter, and the rectangles each measure 10 inches wide by 22 inches high, and the glass is 3 16th of an inch thick. If you do order glass, make sure to ask for the edges to be smoothed over so that you don't cut your hands. They usually do this anyway, but it's a good idea to ask in case they don't. If you plan on having the table up against a wall, the mirrors make the table look really lush and full, and it gives this illusion of depth and space. But if you have more of an open concept and you want to float the table in the middle of a room, you could do six clear pieces of glass instead, so that you aren't looking at the back of a mirror, which isn't very pretty. Once the table was repaired and the caulk was fully cured, I went ahead and refilled the terrarium. For some reason, I don't have a picture of this table from before to show you, but previously I just had soil and plants with no drainage layers. The plants did just fine without a drainage layer, it didn't seem to hurt them at all, but this time I thought it would look cool to have some layers. The first layer was just some play sand I picked up at Lowe's. It's pretty heavy, so I didn't want to do a very thick layer, just enough that it looked kind of nice. The next layer is this multicolored aquarium gravel. I went with wavy, irregular layers because I thought it would look more interesting. At this point, a lot of people advise putting a fine screen of some kind to keep the plant roots out of the gravel layer, and they also recommend horticultural charcoal to act sort of like a filter. But I ended up skipping both of those things. But if you would like to, you of course can use those. The next layer is the actual soil. The potting mix I have did not have any perlite in it, and I really prefer mixes that have perlite for container-grown plants. I think it's so important. So I bought a bag of perlite to mix into the soil. This is going to make the soil light and airy, and it's also going to help with moisture control and drainage. After that, I could finally add the plants. The basic arrangement was basically tall stuff in the back and then shorter and vining plants in the front. In the back, I placed a couple of Dracaena. These are a little short looking right now, but trust me, they will get tall. This green one is called Janet Craig and it was one that I had in my previous table. It actually got so tall before that it started to outgrow the table, so I had to cut it down and let it re-sprout again. I also bought this Dracaena with these really pretty variegated leaves, and I've had one of these before too, and they are very easy to grow. And they also eventually get very tall. I really wanted a fern, for the terrarium because I think they would do really well in this kind of environment. So I bought this one from Lowe's. I think it might be an autumn fern. That's what Siri thought at least, but I'm not sure. I'm kind of annoyed because it didn't say what variety of fern it is on the tag. It just said that it was easy to grow. 
I usually like to know the exact name of the plants that I'm growing so I can research their care needs, but I decided just to roll the dice on this one and see how it goes. Anyway, if you happen to know what kind of fern this is, please let me know in the comments because it's been bugging me. The next couple of plants are brand new to me, so I don't know how they will adapt to this environment, but they were really pretty, so I thought I'd give them a shot. I really liked the color and variegated foliage of both of these plants, and I thought it would add a lot of interest to the table. I have absolutely no idea how they will do in this terrarium environment, but I'm going to try them anyway. And if they look like they're suffering at all, I will pull them out. The last thing I did was layer in these pothos vines that were in the table previously. These are really easy to do from cuttings, so I just removed them from their soil completely, brushed them with a little rooting hormone, and layered them in. After that, I gave the whole thing a drink. My goal is not to get everything totally saturated or soggy. It's really important to be cautious with water because there's no drainage at all. I just want everything evenly moist. You really don't need to water this setup a whole lot because once you put a lid on it, it's a closed system. One thing I wanted to point out is that you need to put a little bit of an air gap here at the top so that you can allow some fresh air into the system. So to do that, I just glued these little felt pads on the corners just to give it a little breathing gap. If you get the balance right, the water evaporates and condenses in a cycle and you can actually see it happening. So in the morning when the sun hits the table, I come in here and I can actually see the water evaporating and steaming up inside the glass. And later when the sun shifts, it cools down and the water condenses and falls back on the plants again. So it's really like its own little ecosystem. The light balance for a system like this is really critical. You need some sunlight to trigger evaporation and get the cycle going, but if you get too much light, you can end up cooking the plants. I have my table in a room with eastern exposure, and it's set back from the window a few feet too, which seems to be just about perfect. These big bay windows capture a lot of morning sun, and then the rest of the day it gets gentle indirect light. So everyone's home environment is different and it might take a little experimenting to find the right light balance for your environment, but once you find that balance, it is so easy to care for this. You really don't need to water it very often because all the moisture pretty much stays inside the system. So I've gone a month, two months, three months even without adding any extra water. It really depends on the time of the year and the temperature. I like to take my cues from the table itself. So long as I can see that little bit of water evaporating and condensing each day, I know there is enough water in the system. It's normal for the table to steam up a little each day, but it should also clear up each day as well if it's in balance. So if I see that the table is steamed up all day long and it never seems to clear, or there's a lot of mold growth, I know that there is too much water in the system, so at that point I would take the top off for a little bit and introduce some fresh air into the system to dry it out. So it's been a little over a month and it really looks good so far. Everything looks just as healthy as the day I planted it. How this arrangement fares long term remains to be seen. 
In an enclosed environment like this, eventually it will need to be refreshed because without drainage, eventually you can get salt buildup and other problems. But I do expect that some of these plants should last several years without problems or until this table gets broken again, if this table gets broken again. Anyway, I'm really happy with the way that this has turned out, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!